Okay, my concrete's been curing for a week under this black plastic tarp. The, I, I hooked up an irrigation system to slowly add water to keep the thing moist. That's super important for the curing of concrete. Uh, this is always an exciting part to see what your, what your cured concrete looks like. So I, I always feel that, uh, it's, it's just fun peeling off the forms, uh, figuring out what, uh, what the thing looks like. So I screwed in the forms on the inside and nailed them in on the outside, so most of the thing can be, can be peeled off of there. So it, uh, just getting to see what the concrete looks like under there, because <clears throat> then, then you find out if, uh, if you've done a, done a good job, consolidated it, or if you've got a honeycomb mess inside there. Uh, the forms peel off a lot easier if, uh, if you add a little bit of vegetable oil to the forms beforehand, so I did, I did uh, rub them down with uh, vegetable oil before uh, putting the concrete in there. Uh, so they, they peeled off quite easily, at least in places where I had planned ahead and made sure that uh, I could get it all the fasteners to, to pop them out of there. So it, the forms came off really easily. Most of the concrete actually looks quite good. So the stuff that I packed in there well, consolidated, it looks great. Uh, the, the corners actually are beveled, look really good. This, this is not so good. So here in the corner, I didn't tap it hard enough. Uh, and boy, the well water added a lot of iron to the surface. So luckily you can fix this kind of stuff. So I've got a little diamond, uh, diamond wheel here. So I had some rain that messed up the surface finish. I uh, wasn't able to actually make the final finishing pass. So this essentially is the final finishing pass. Uh, d diamond diamond wheel is only about fifty dollars, so it goes right on your angle grinder. You definitely need a mask. It r gives a, a smooth, really pretty finish. I really like that uh, that look, the sectioned little piece of aggregate. So next up is to put the sill plates on. <clears throat> sill plates need to get anchored anchored down through the anchor bolts. So I usually drill one hole that I've measured in, tap the thing with a hammer to mark the hole location, and then drill the hole. Now, a couple of places I needed to use something else. So here I've got a little Tapcon anchors. Oh my gosh, a hammer drill goes in concrete fast. It's, uh, it's only cured a week, so it's still a little bit tender. The, so the pink plastic keeps moisture off the silk. So just need to cut off the pink plastic. And now I'm ready to put in the Tapcons. Super duper easy. They just screw right into the hole that, that we drilled through the concrete. Make sure you have enough space in the hole to fit the whole screw, and then it just goes in with a, a little impact wrench. I really like those. Okay, next step is framing. So we're going to set up a wall. Uh, super important. Get your layout exactly right so you know where all of your studs are, all your rafters. So this is the, the sill plate, the bottom plate, and the top plate. So you can see I have my top plates are laid out on the ground. Uh, I have the bottom plate closest to us because we're going to tip that wall up. So basic idea here, I'm just uh, going to uh, nail the studs in between the top plate and the bottom plate. Uh, the, the pneumatic nailer just makes this so easy. It, it feels about as fast as this sped up version, to be honest. Uh, the biggest, biggest slowdown here is actually cutting parts. So it might have been that I should have just set up a stack of, of boards and then cut them. I really I didn't want to handle the boards more than once as I was doing this, so I'm kind of trying several variants of, uh, of how, how to set this thing up. Uh, building a wall is actually super duper fast as long as you have good access to, to everything and get a uh, reasonably flat surface to work on. I, I like to make sure that I can get to both uh, both sides here, so uh, prop between the sill plates is actually a pretty good way to, to set up at least uh, your first few walls. Uh, turned out the best way to do the chop saw was to actually just stack two two by fours on top of one another. I, although I should have set up my end block so that it uh, it would line up two two by fours on top of each other. Because it turns out that two by four right there is actually uh, about a quarter inch short. Uh, so we got a wall. I put on a diagonal to make sure the thing doesn't go sideways when I lift it. And it's actually pretty, pretty light. Two by fours come up really easily. I had drilled holes in the bottom plate to drop into the anchors. Well, most anchors. Okay, there we go. So three anchor bolts basically like secure on there. Now the problem is this thing, I have to hold it to keep it upright. 
And then I, I want to level the thing. I need to grab my nailer and get uh, get this in. So get care planning ahead definitely helps here, although it's a heck of a lot easier if you have more than one person. Kind of need four hands to do this part, even if you've planned it carefully. So uh, once it's nailed in there, you really want to go through and uh, make sure that it, because it, 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 it can still rack uh, sideways for a lot of values of sideways. Uh, so that's that was actually super duper easy, much faster than uh, than doing anything else in the project. It seemed like framing it always seems like the fastest and most fun part. Uh, this little wall is just temporary, so it's it's there so I can get uh, the big slanted front of the greenhouse up. Uh, really hard to do slanted walls because uh, again you need a lot of hands to hold it. So I think okay, yeah, I'll just uh, this is this is very unconventional framing, uh, and yeah, that that little leg did not hold together. So that's that's no good because there's only one of me, and I really need to hold both ends upright uh, so I can brace this thing upward. And uh, oh man, you can see this thing is almost going. And that's that's a that's a problem. If I had been looking at the other side, I probably would have been able to get this uh, get this right. But oh, and it's okay. Well, that just happened. So <clears throat> get to a stable state where basically like everything's safe, and then figure out okay, I need to do this in some more intelligent fashion. So step one, uh, remove all the old nails, etc. And then I, all I have to do is I have to make sure that uh, both ends are upright. So I can hold one end, and the other end basically already needs to be upright before I start moving anything around. So the idea is I'm going to assemble this end, I'm going to put a diagonal brace on, which I totally should have done uh, before, before I started. I basically line this thing up uh, with my marks, uh, and uh, I cut out several iterations of this process where you try and get everything vertical on all the dimensions and then screw it down into the sill plate. Now this all has to come out after the rest of the building is built. So this is this this is why this gets a little a little bit weird. So the idea is these two uprights, uh, once everything else is in, and the the slanted parts are uh, leaning against each other properly and self-supporting, then I can actually just pull these side plates out sideways, and uh, and then the the top should come down. So hopefully that's hopefully it's going to be straightforward. Uh, okay, yeah, that's probably the way I should have done it in the, the first place. Had I put in the diagonal braces, it probably would have held together. Had I had more people, it probably would have held together. I got a crew of one here, so I, I got what I got. Uh, make sure everything is level, and then screw it all in. And hey, I got two walls up today, so that's uh, that feels like uh, uh, progress. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to start stacking parts on top of these. Now, the parts are slanted and uh, they slant up quite a ways. This is, uh, is going to be a little bit hinky, so stay tuned. Uh, definitely sub to see how I do it.